How do you find O Perilous World to be different from your other albums? Uh, I had a more organized idea of what I was going to try to do. The other past records have been more like I would write a bunch of songs with a loose, a loose theme, more like a stylistic theme, and then uh, you know fit them together later. They didn't really get born together. <clears throat> but O Perilous World was like I had a plan and. Uh, and I followed through. And I had characters and tried to develop them. And Select your chair, the new chairs, and um, how long does it take to get them ready? Uh, it depends on the musician. Uh, before Sierra, we had a couple of less inexperienced, less experienced players, and I was used to playing with, and uh, so I don't know if they would ever be ready. But Sarah is a fantastic musician, and it's you know a quick study. It doesn't take her long. But we do have so much, so much material that when, whenever you have a new person, a lot of older songs, you know, that people love get lost in the shuffle. But we'll pull them out. a good point that cello isn't very common and so why did you choose to learn it? Um, when I was a little girl uh, they used to have music in the public schools and around fourth grade you got to pick an instrument for orchestra or band and I picked the cello and I've been playing piano for since I was five so I know a lot about music and I picked the cello and I loved it and it was natural to me and I studied pretty hard when I was little. You play uh, the dulcimer on uh -huh. a few of the tracks, and that instrument is amazing, first of all. And how did you get into that? Because it's not exactly something you could learn in a school band or orchestra. Yeah. Um, my dad bought a kit to make one when I was a kid, and so he made it, and that was around the house, and I fooled around with it when I was little, but didn't really focus on it too much, but it was around, and uh, I've had one myself for quite a few years, and with this record, I wanted to shake up my songwriting process a little bit, so I wrote most of these songs on the dulcimer, because sometimes if you take something you're not that familiar with, or an instrument that you don't know, you can be more fresh. So, what type of student were you in high school? Um, in high school, I had an art teacher who was like a mentor to me, and the requirements in high school were, were very easy in Kansas. So I took just art all day, art all day, and hung out there, and uh, I thought I was really cool, and I was very new wave, and other kids in Kansas thought I was pretty freaky, but, uh, and then I went to uh, Philadelphia College of Art for a summer, and met lots of people from the East Coast and knew that I wanted to go to school over here and uh, then I got to go back to Kansas and be all cool and be lucky. Now, on a lot of your records, uh, you have songs that aren't so much songs as like stories set to music. Um, how do you get inspiration for those stories? Uh, I think usually it's an accent. I love words and enjoy playing with words, and so I'll write those like a little script, and uh, and and then enjoy doing the accents. And I play with voice speed some, you know, like slow it down and make a weird, you know, make a weird lady. <laughs>
Have you heard any news from uh, Carpello Parvo, I believe her name was? The missing chest? Oh, I think she's got some recordings that are going to come out. The basement tapes of Carpello Parvo. I've heard that she's going to be releasing those soon. Do you watch TV? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I don't at all, and it's changed my life in wonderful ways. And my daughter goes to a wonderful school where it's really not allowed. The kids can't watch TV or have electronic entertainment of any kind. And it's really great for our life because we're more focused on music and talking and drawing. And it's really good. And we're not uh, exposed to commercials. The people think TV is really unavoidable, but it is avoidable and it really improves everything. Was Mama really an opium smoker? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I am adopted, and I know my birth mother. I've known her, you know, for a, a lot of years. So I have two mothers, so I can kind of, you know, play them. And uh, definitely, definitely, my adopted mother wasn't an, an opium smoker, but my real mother was a hippie. Do you let your daughter listen to Rasputina? Uh, yeah, I do. She's really proud of me, and she oh. likes that. She doesn't get to go to many shows because they're usually late or smoky or just not suitable for a young girl like her. But once in a while she sees us, and she really likes being involved with the band members and watching us prepare, and she's very involved. How important are the fans to you, like, going even so much as just meeting them after a show, or, like, do you get fan mail and that kind of thing? How important is it to hear from them? Um, it's really important because it's one of the best rewards or to hear from people you feel, you know, somebody does care. There's a, you know, a point to doing this. You know, we don't have to do it in a vacuum. And it feels really good to influence people or help them when they're down. And I hear all that from people. and. It's the good part of doing it. One of the one of the good parts of doing it. Are there any like modern bands that you listen to? Because I've heard that you really don't listen to too many people that are new. But are there any out there? Well, I get asked for year end lists. You know, like the best records of the year. It's like, There's no way I can fill out one of those lists. <laughs> like maybe you know, I listen to one new record. Um, I like the White Stripes a lot. You know, they're totally popular. Um, have you noticed me listening to anything that's actually current? Amy Listen to Amy Winehouse for a while. You were? I don't, because my phone, I discover things. It's like uh, Hildegard von Bingen, mm -hmm. you know, like a medieval <laughs> nun who composed the most incredible, you know, the most incredible music that's so beautiful. Uh, but that's, like, not only is it Middle Ages, like, those, those recordings were popular from the 80s or something. Like, I don't know where they're from. <laughs>